Good afternoon, everybody. The title of my presentation is uh, The uh, European Union's Eastern Neighborhood, Identities and Conflicts, a comparison between um, um, Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova. Um, for the first uh, uh, section, uh, I would start with some uh, uh, background remarks on the European Union's Eastern Neighborhood. Uh, the Eastern Neighborhood is obviously a political concept, not necessarily a geographical reality. Uh, since, for example, Azerbaijan, uh, having no direct borders with the European Union, is in, while Russia, bordering a number of uh, northern EU states, is out. Part of the European neighborhood policy, the Eastern Partnership is a political instrument or initiative launched at the Prague Summit of May 2009 as an uh, EU strategy for Eastern Europe after the August 2008 uh, Russian-Georgian war when it was self-evident that it, that was an alert for both the post-Soviet states and for the European Union to come up urgently with a solution for the entire region. The Eastern Partnership was co-authored by the Polish Foreign Minister Radoslav Sikorski um, and the Swedish Foreign Minister at that time, Karl Bildt, in order to create a proper framework for developing relations with the European and South Caucasus post-Soviet republics, accepting, as I said before, the Russian Federation, and also for giving them the chance to prepare for uh, association agreements uh, and deep and comprehensive free trade agreements with the EU. Six countries were therefore invited to join the Eastern Partnership from north to south, Belarus, Ukraine, Republic of Moldova, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Out of these six countries, uh, Moldova, Georgia, and uh, Ukraine signed and ratified the uh, uh, association agreements with the EU in 2014. But uh, recently, the Netherlands rejected a national referendum, actually 10 days ago, the ratification of the uh, association agreement with Ukraine, which means an important political crisis of approaching the future EU-Ukraine uh, relations and uh, collaboration. Um, you have a, the map of the European Union and the Eastern uh, uh, Neighborhood with uh, two distinct uh, and compact subgroups, the northern subgroup, Belarus, Ukraine, and, and Moldova, and the southern subgroup uh, in uh, South Caucasus between uh, the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea with uh, Georgia, Armenia, and um, Azerbaijan. One of the most debated and criticized aspects of the Eastern Partnership was uh, the absence of an explicit European perspective, the so-called uh, roadmap to full membership, even a long-term one, offered by the EU to its Eastern partners. The Eastern Partnership was therefore a clearly different approach than the one implemented in the Western Balkans for Serbia, Macedonia, or Montenegro, for instance or in relation to Turkey, which received the status of candidates to full membership. The so-called European fatigue after the massive EU enlargements in 2004 and 2007, combined with the growing hostility of Russia in the region, and I would say with the consequences of the global financial crisis in 2009 at that time, uh, made almost impossible any firm commitment of the EU leaders in relation to the post-Soviet republics. The general purpose of the initiative was only uh, the political association and economic integration of the region with the European Union, without a clear European perspective. Moreover, the Eastern neighborhood was perceived from the beginning by international relations specialists, mass media, and public opinion as a buffer zone between the European Union and Russia. Later conflicts and developments in the region have actually confirmed the geopolitical status of a gray zone. The Eastern Partnership countries uh, do share a core of common characteristics and vulnerabilities. And among these, I mentioned just a few ones, all six states belonged to the Soviet Union, 
have no or minimum historical experience as modern sovereign states, with the exception of a very short period between 1918 and 1920s, uh, some of them even shorter, uh, face variable economic dependency on Russian markets and resources, confront with uh, high levels of corruption, lack of transparency and efficiency in public administration, uh, weak Soviet-style infrastructure, Russian ethnic communities, smaller or larger, deep societal cleavages, and I mean political, interethnic, uh, religious cleavages, and so on. And also they are disabled by frozen conflicts. But they also have a number of specific features which make them closer either to the EU, example Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia, or to Russia, example uh, Belarus and uh, Armenia. The second uh, part is dedicated to uh, this idea of Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova struggling between Europe and Russia. Ukraine and Moldova are among the most pro-European countries, as I said before, in the EU's eastern neighborhood. Both countries signed um, the association agreements and deep and comprehensive free trade agreements at the EU summit in June 2014. Ukraine and Moldova currently face very difficult economic situations, which have seriously deteriorated in the past years. In relation to both states, Russia disposes of political and economic leverage to limit or counterbalance the pro-EU and pro-NATO uh, strategic options. Uh, the political and financial support of the West, and this is an important idea, was below the level of expectations of the pro-European voters in the two countries. While the reforms and performances in Ukraine, I mean political performances, economic, administrative performances, and Moldova, Ukraine and Moldova, were far below the level of expectations um, of the European institutions. So that's why kind of a mutual uh, disappointment appeared in the relations between the EU and the two countries, and this will be reflected in the next general elections, both in Moldova and in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, here is uh, the map, the, the, the ethnical map, so to say, of the Republic of Moldova, uh, which is the second smallest uh, Eastern Partnership country after Armenia, which is the smallest, completely uh, landlocked, bordered only by Romania and Ukraine, having approximately uh, 3.5 million citizens, including the separatist region of Transnistria uh, in the east. As you can see, um, uh, with the uh, yellow uh, is the, ethnic major uh, the uh, majoritarian ethnic Romanian-speaking regions, um, in uh, green, uh, the Ukrainian majority uh, regions in um, uh, red, the Russian uh, majorities uh, in uh, violet, the um, uh, Gagauz. Uh, uh, by the way, I don't know how many of you know how what are the, the Gagauz, uh, except of my colleagues from Romania and the Republic of Moldova. Probably it's a unique uh, combination in Europe. The Gagauz are um, Orthodox Turks. So in other words, Russified Turks, and this tell us a lot about the history of the region and the intersection of the former empires. Uh, and 2% um, uh, 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 Bulgarian uh, in the southern part of the Republic of Moldova. So the Romanian-speaking population, including both the denominations of Romanian and Moldovan, and I will come back later on on this, are approximately, or more than, 65%. But it's interesting that uh, in the capital city of Chisinau, um, uh, between uh, yellow and red stripes, we can understand that there is a mix of population, approximately 50-50 speaking Romanian and, and Russian uh, languages. Uh, but uh, Romanian-speaking population is, lar is largely based in the rural areas and, and small uh, uh, cities. 
Ukraine and its ethnic regions, it's even more complicated here. Ukraine is the largest uh, Easter partnership country, having approximately 45 million citizens. Uh, also, the, the colors uh, tell us a lot about majorities, ethnic majorities. In blue, we have uh, large Ukrainian majorities. They say more than 80%. So this is the, the western and the central um, parts of Ukraine. Uh, in gray, we have uh, Ukraine, still Ukrainian majoritarian regions, more than 60%, but we can imagine if there are 60% Ukrainian, there are 40% uh, Russians, which is a very significant uh, minority. Then we move to the other side. Uh, so the, um, the gray regions, Odessa, very important region in Ukraine, uh, and also Kharkiv, Dnipropetrovsk, and Zaporizhia. Then the majority uh, speaking regions, um, uh, between 60 to 80 uh, percent, the eastern part, Luhansk and Donetsk, the separatist regions, and with more than 80 percent, um, Crimea. Identities and conflicts in, in Ukraine and Moldova. I would start with some specific aspects uh, um, regarding Ukraine. The main identity cleavage is between Ukrainians and Russians, on which the West-East or the pro-West, pro-East political dispute is basically organized. The ethnic groups are large and compact, relatively well-defined geographically, culturally, and historically. The pro-Russian eastern and southern regions are more industrialized, while the pro-European western and northern regions have small cities and large rural uh, areas. In the western Ukraine, there are also influential Polish, Romanian, and Hungarian minorities. The illegal annexation of Crimea by Russia in March 2014 not only defied the international law, but also left the Tatar community prisoner in a Russian-controlled region facing abuses and infringements of human rights. The secession war in Donbass, in eastern Ukraine, obviously fueled by Russia, is slowly getting the international state as a frozen conflict, canceling even theoretical chances of Ukraine to join the European Union and NATO. As for the Republic of Moldova, some specific aspects. Um, there, the good news is that the Republic of Moldova, from this perspective, it, uh, has no direct borders with Russia. But, there's always a but in this region. In the separatist region of Transnistria, there are still Russian stationed troops since the war of 1991-1992. Moscow called them peacekeeping forces while Kishinev named them occupation troops. The main identity controversy is between the so-called Moldovan, and I would say that this is a fake national identity invented by the Soviets. After the annexation of Bessarabia in 1940, Bessarabia is the, uh, uh, the historical name of the western part of the historical province of Moldavia, located between the rivers Brut and Nistru, and Romanians. Both groups are Romanian-speaking um, uh, citizens and totalize more than 65% of the population of Republic of Moldova. The rest are represented by Ukrainians, 14%, Russians, 13%, 4% Gagaus, and 2% Bulgarian. Although the Constitution of Republic of Moldova from 1994 stipulates that the state language is Moldovan, the Constitutional Court decided in 2013 that the state language is Romanian because the Declaration of Independence in August 1991 um, was written in Romanian and uh, it preceded the Constitution. Uh, the party of the communists and the pro-Russian parties supported the idea of Moldovanism and oppose any debate or return to the Romanian national identity, considering it a dangerous, a dangerous step towards reunification with the Romania. So whenever you hear about Moldovanism, even in the, its softer version of European Moldovanism, 
uh, be sure that you have in front of you a product of Soviet or post-Soviet indoctrination. Uh, unlike other Eastern Partnership countries, Moldova had no color revolution. Uh, it means that uh, alternation in power in Chisinau was realized through um, democratic and, and fairly uh, correct elections. You've got another five minutes. Pardon me? That's the five minutes. Five minutes. After the alternation in power in 2009, the pro-European government, government alliance made up of three parties, the Liberal Democrats, the Democrats, and the Liberals, made some progress in reorienting the country to the East. But domestic reforms remained slow and weak. Frequent disagreements between pro-European leaders led to political fragmentation and instability. Uh, a general weakness of successive governments and several crises. Moldova had seven prime ministers in the past three years. Seven prime ministers, including the uh, ad interim prime ministers between 2013 and 2016. The huge scandal of corruption, the theft of $1 billion from Moldovan banks, had a negative impact after 2014 on the public support for the pro-European parties. Recent polls indicate a severe decreasing of the mainstream pro-European parties. The potential of new pro-European parties, this is good news, uh, but also the bad news, a rise of the pro-Russian socialists led by uh, Igor Dodon as the first opposition party, and also a slight increasing of, this is good news, uh, of the pro-unionist uh, option somewhere uh, between 22 and 25 percent, depending on the polls, uh, especially among youth. In March 2016, the Constitutional Court decided that the revision of the Constitution in 2000 was unconstitutional after 16 years. Uh, and at that time, in, in 2000, it was the switch to a parliamentary republic. So, in, in uh, March 2016, they restored the former universal suffrage uh, for the election of the president, starting with, the, uh, with this year presidential uh, elections in the fall. As for conclusions, the approaches of national identities and internal conflicts uh, have a number of similarities in Ukraine and Moldova, mainly given by their Soviet heritage and the lack of experience as sovereign states as well as some peculiarities. There is a large spread tendency to associate political fault lines, example West-East, with uh, ethnical cleavages within society. But ethnicity is not an absolute indicator of political options. The idea that the region will remain a buffer zone between the EU and Russia without a clear European perspective demoralized the centrist pro-European supporters and boosted either the pro-Russian platforms uh, in Moldova or the far-right nationalists in, in Ukraine. Both Moldova and Ukraine lost pro-European momentum between 2009 and 2014 and failed to remain engaged in democratization, fighting corruption and administrative reforms. There is a real danger of failed states in Ukraine and Moldova in the near future. Um, uh, the multiple crises of the European Union, uh, the Eurozone crisis, the migrants crisis, terrorism, and so on, distracted attention and interest in the West uh, for the Eastern neighborhood, culminating with a Dutch no for the EU association agreement with uh, Ukraine. And, and my last idea is that, uh, unfortunately, the Easter partnership um, might be considered a semi-failure of the European Union, and it has to be uh, revisited. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nemesco.